Hello, my friends. How are you doing today? I have a really awesome surprise for you. You can watch me do a photo shoot and edit the picture from start to finish. Both of them, of course, in time lapse. But the video is filled with secret sauce about all these steps that I'm doing. The reason why I'm doing this video is because a while back I ordered studio backdrops from a company called D Backdrop. And they are a company from China. They have a lot of variety, but I was a little bit like, mm, I'm not sure if that's going to be good quality. But once they arrived, I was really happy with the digital backgrounds and the quality and the prints. I'm not affiliated with them, but as you know, I only ever do reviews if I am really convinced of the quality of the product. So let's get started. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer. This time we're going to do some amazing photo stuff. Hit that subscribe button. This will improve your photo editing quality. Let's do this. Here we are in my room with model Claudia. And as always, it was a ton of fun to work with her. And you might wonder why is this a different background than I use in the photo I'm editing? Well, I forgot to record the rose background photo shoot. This is also the first time I'm using the studio backgrounds and I have to say they are a ton of fun to use. They are very easy to use and also they are very affordable and a good mix between being on an actual location and using a complete digital background. Now, if you're on an actual location, of course, you have a lot more choices. Uh, you can change perspective, you can change location, you, uh, there's different lights of day, stuff like that. But you have to have that location, you have to go to that location, you maybe have to rent that location. So there's a lot more time and money involved in that. And of course, with that digital, with this kind of studio backdrop, you just put it up there, you have to iron it a little bit. So it's not wrinkly. But other than that, you could go to any any kind of location within of minutes and for example do a shooting on different locations with no stress in one afternoon so that's pretty amazing the other interesting thing is that when you work with a completely digital background you have to remove everything around the model and make these complex hair selections, all these kind of things. So that can be very hard. And also you have ambient light. For example, if you use a green screen, you might have a green shimmer on the model. So that's also not as easy to do. Here with these backgrounds, the huge benefit is that they are physically with you in the same room. And this means Everything that applies to the model also applies to the background, which means, for example, the lens you're using, the settings on your camera, the depth of field, the ISO uh, resolution, basically, the ISO grain that you have in your picture applies to the model and to the background. So this makes it a lot more real. It feels different and you have great results with the really interesting picture backgrounds that are very quick to change. So now we come to editing the picture. You can see here I'm doing a frequency separation. What you can't see here is that I have started in PhotoLab where I did some basic adjustments. It has a very good raw processing. And then I applied Viveza, which is great for fixing different light situations, structure, contrast in the picture to prepare it. And then here, I've done a frequency separation to paint in skin tones. As you can see here, I'm removing some of the highlight. If you see these brighter dots that I'm removing right here, this is where I made a little mistake. I fixed the skin problems a little like, I don't know, skin irritation, stuff like that, little hairs and stuff like that before I did the skin color adjustment, removing the highlight. So that wasn't good. So I did that step again. In that step here, you can see I'm brightening up the teeth and the eyes. So the first step is where I brighten them up. And then I do a second step where I am actually adjusting with an HSL layer the colors because sometimes the teeth can be a little bit yellow or the eyes can be a little bit red in the white. So you want to either remove that, but not completely, just make it a little bit less intense. Here you can see that I copy parts of the hair. I bend it with warp and also with liquify. And then I put a darker layer in between that I reduce in opacity so I can see where I have to erase the borders to make it really soft. And then I copy the hair. And this is to get 
like this nice brushed hair and not have all these strains in the hair by the way let me know in the comments if you want me to do a full online course on how i for example edit this picture or another picture like portrait editing course from start to finish that might be interesting where i also explain more in detail why i do different steps stuff like that the whole process i think was maybe two two and a half hours to edit everything um, sometimes it's a little bit of a puzzle, a creative puzzle to figure out what you want to do, how much you want to edit, how much you want to change, stuff like that. Um, you can still see that I'm adjusting the hair. Here what I'm doing is that I'm actually using the smudge finger to just smudge the structure of the hair a bit to make it even softer and even straighter. This next step here, I'm using Liquify to puff up the, how can I say, the, the arm, the clothing on the arm. I'm not, I'm not sure about the right word here, but you know what I mean. I'm puffing that up a little bit. And there's a little trick. I copy the picture beforehand and then I can erase the parts that show the background because the background shouldn't be um, different, right? So you want to puff up the arm and then afterwards erase the parts where the background is also has also been moved so the background is still straight here i'm fixing the little skin part under the chin uh, so everything looks nice you can see here i'm comparing the before and after for the hair do a little save and then of course next part we are going to look at the lips giving it a different nicer color and I decided to make a mask instead of using just one adjustment I'm using multiple adjustments to get uh, the saturation the brightness and the color adjustments and now I'm doing the same thing with the eyes where I also adjust the colors then I also apply a recolor layer so to make the eyes brighter give a more contrast and also make them a little bit of this smoky blue um, color not completely blue just a, a hint of blue here i'm putting a little bit of depth of field on that i think i'll remove that later on a little bit of experimenting with my overlays early on just to get a better feel of what i want to do um in the video or not in the video in the in the editing right uh, so i'm just playing around with different ideas at that moment but then i decide to go uh, to do different a different approach at that moment i also decided well uh, first of all i make a second copy of the file where i remove all of the other layers so you can see that i have one layer that is just the last state and this saves a lot of memory uh, for working like what is it called ram uh, on your computer so everything is faster again and at this point as you can see me i am removing uh the the tattoos from the arm so i'm trying a method where i paint over that with frequency separation i wasn't happy with that so i um closed the file opened it again and now i'm doing it just with the in paint brush to get a nicer texture and applying the in paint brush just a ton on these different areas as you can see works pretty nicely here i'm using i think the stamp brush to um, adjust that and now we are in nick collection where i do adjustments for glamour glow for different light situations color situations i apply a vignette as you can see here i like the vignette a lot better in nick collection so this is why i do that so uh, color effects is from nick collection by the way and do some other adjustments i add some grain also like analog film grain you can see me here i'm zooming in and it's a little bit too much so uh, i make it softer and then i also reduce the opacity so there is just a tiny hint of analog uh, grain in the picture yeah here i'm i'm saving the preset and that's mostly it uh, now i'm doing some color adjustment i'm playing around with my mythical gradient overlays to just give it a little bit of another touch and then last but not least i'm doing also some dodge and burn in multiple layers by the way 
Uh, the way I'm doing this also is that I'm using a very big brush, so I have a very soft, big edge of my shadows. And then I'm using the eraser to erase the parts where I don't want to have this darkening of the shadows. And this is also something Dodge and Burn is really great to shape the surface a little bit to make it more round. Um, give it more volume, especially in the hair, but sometimes also in the face. And yeah, also you can see up here, I'm brightening up a little bit the hair on the, uh, how do you say, on the forehead because she's wearing a wig. I'm fixing some parts of the hair again. So, you know, I'm, I'm always going very much into detail and then I see something and something else. And I'm at this point, I'm still not happy. There is a ton more things that I could do, but I said, okay, that's enough. You have to at some point say, okay, let's finish this you can do better at the next work, right? Don't obsess over just one work. Get your projects finished, even if you know there is still some mistakes there, and then get better next time, right? It's always it's always a process of growing. Uh, here you can see me try to fix that part. Um, I tried the different methods with the stamp and stuff like that. I wasn't completely happy how that looked because it kind of... We have a little dent here where the eyes are of the skull structure of our face. And if I iron that out, the face doesn't look good. And we know faces so well because we see them every day that these small things just stand out to us. Uh, so I instead decided to just push the hair a little bit more into the face so that part is covered. And at the same time, it doesn't change the bone structure.